Hey guys, this is Annette with Annette's Astrology Corner and I am here to talk to you guys about the lunar eclipse that is going to be happening on July 27, 2018. Um, that's based on Pacific uh, time, just to let you know. It is going to be conjunct Mars and Aquarius, which is in retrograde and um, the opposing energy, the sun, is going to be conjunct um, the North Node in Leo, and I just want to talk to you about that because this is some very, this is a, this is an incredible lunar eclipse. I feel deeply like it's removing the veil from last summer, things that were still in the dark about on a very deep level, um, our soul's purpose. Um, if you were to remove the human experience from your soul, like if you were just to be just a soul-based energy, um, it's getting that real with you. Because what this particular lunar eclipse is going to be based on is shadow work. So the moon is at the furthest point away from the earth. That is why the lunar eclipse is going to take an hour and 43 minutes to complete. And it's also going to be a blood moon, which means that the light from the sun the, is going to illuminate the moon with its longest light waves. And those are the red and the orangey colors. Um, anytime you get like a blue moon or a white um, moon, it's because it's closest to the earth. So think about if you were to remove emotion from a situation and you were just to put it aside and you were to center your life around what you're centering your life around right now. Think about that because what we centered our lives around when we were in our 20s is different than our 30s, is different than our 40s, is different than our 50s, and so on. And so that's why we have um, a sun and a moon, is because the emotion, the emotional experience is what our, is what our sun really needs to keep it grounded. Sorry, my dog heard somebody jump in the water and he's like wanting to go over there and jump in. <clears throat> so I've struggled with this, um, feeling this energy because there's a there's a part of this energy that is it's funny, I feel like what we're centering ourselves around right now is some very past-based anger. And it's because something that we wanted, our ego wanted, it feels like it may have missed out on or maybe there was a aspect to it that we were just deeply centering our lives around. And when we didn't get it, sorry, when we didn't get it, it was very upsetting to us because it literally shattered the illusion that came along with getting that, that what that ego wanted at the time, what you wanted at the time. I say that ego because I feel like our egos are aligned with something completely different since the solar eclipse. And now a year later, we're, we're really dividing the sun's experience and, and the moon's experience. Um, and we're looking at this just as a totality, this lesson as a totality, like we're looking at our life as a whole. It's not all about what your ego wants, what you want to center your life around, what your sun is, because there's some, there's not, I feel like you don't trust an area totally in your sun. 
and in the moon I feel like you were in the dark for a really long time about what you emotionally craved and wanted from a situation and I feel like you feel like there are two worlds apart like I feel like you're, you're divided in the middle and I feel like what is really powerful right now is the earth it's the earth's energy that's why Every time I need to do a reading, I need to be on the ground. Like I have to be touching the earth right now. I have to be smelling the earth. Because I feel like, okay, let's just talk about this. So the lunar eclipse is going to be squaring off with Venus and Virgo and it's going to be squaring off with Uranus and Taurus. And when I feel those energies, I feel like the material realm is a confusing realm to be in. If that's where you're focusing your energy around is success, achievement, um, recognition, um, accolades. If you are a person who wants to center your life around success in the physical realm, I don't think, I think you're not getting the most out of this energy, out of these eclipses, these successions of eclipses. You're not getting it. And you'll repeat whatever karmic journey you've been on again. And there are some people that are really going to hold on to their egos and are really going to act like petulant children. When I tune into this energy a lot, I, I feel like people are angry they're not being understood i feel like there's a constriction and a restriction on their the level they want to take something and i feel like they're not happy with this the rules and the regulations they have got to exist in between because their vision is so big and so it, it's so um powerful and unique and a lot of people aren't really going to completely understand it so what they're doing is they're having to sacrifice a really big part of what they want and they have to work in these restricted boundaries these lines and you know, they got to color in between the lines and most people right now are really angry about that they want to color outside the lines they they don't feel like the rules apply to them. They don't feel like there is a, you know, a way that you can deliver a conversation. Um, they have to work in between social conforming. How am I, what am I trying to say? They don't feel like there's no filter. There's no filter on what they have to say because they don't care how it's received because they understand it so much more deeply, I think, than the world does. But what they don't understand is it's breaking down what they're trying to do, they're, the way that they're delivering it, the way that they're, they're trying to shape uh, this idea. One of the hardest things about um, Aquarians, what they face, is they're so unique that they have a hard time getting people on board with their mindsets. And in shadow work, um, a lot of that comes back at what's being mirrored to you is just this intense <laughs> animosity and resistance to what you are trying to do um, and how you are trying to color outside the lines. And so the shadow work that I was telling you about is it's you got to be really sure about what you're doing right now. You got to make sure that this is an ego. I'm not saying that things tied to your ego are not good. 
I'm saying make sure that what you are centering, centering your life around, your ego around, your soul around, is an upward motion, something that will take you forward. If you are looking back, if you are trying to um, re-energize something from your past, um, and you are trying to take it into a, into a new direction, and you are feeling resistance, then perhaps it is because that's not something that your future is going to be focused around. Now this can be a very intense conversation with yourself because it could be something that you want on a very heart-based level. It's something that's emotional. It's something that is so dark in your world. I keep feeling this darkness all around this energy. And the darkness that I feel is your resistance to see it for what it is. It's you. It's not the world. We're not done with transformation. Okay, we're not done in this in this area of our lives. This this year that we look, we, we're releasing a very big karmic pattern. Well, most of us are. Some of us will still hold on to this and keep on riding the ride, but that's just ego. That's just your ego refusing to lose in a certain category of your life. And that's very earthbound energy. It's very negative. It's very, it's a negative vibration. And, and I sure hope that you're not still there. Not that there's anything wrong with it if you are. You know, egos are very important they get us through hard times they um our ego is important to to keep vibrant and healthy and fired up and and um there's a certain part of our ego that's very important but there's also a very big part of us there's that whole in between energy that i feel like we're kind of resisting if you were to look at the darkest part of all of this energy over this last year, if you were to look at the darkness and if you were to write down in general all of the bad things that happened from this energy and if you were to just face the darkness, I wonder if you would interpret it as them, as they just don't get you, they don't understand you. Um, the world doesn't get you um, or if you can internalize it in any way and, and help it humble you and ground you and help you understand that there is a restriction to the human human experience the earthbound experience there's a restriction you're not a spiritual entity you're not there yet when you're when you're when you let go of your body and you, and you transfer yourself into the spiritual realm as you transfer into that realm, that's a whole nother journey. But the earthbound world, working within the earthly experience, there is a restriction. There is limitations. There's lots of things to work through. And so removing your son and removing, I mean, if you were to put those aside in the moon, if you were to put the, the sun and the moon aside and you were just to take a look at this earthbound world, there's a lot wrong with it, right? It doesn't seem very fair. It doesn't seem very just. I feel like the rules, the laws that we are all governed by um, are antiquated. I feel like there's too much noise. Um, on earth there's it's it's there's nowhere quiet anymore where your soul can just be alone and heal um, so many people are willing to publicize every fault about you and to call you out on all of whatever it is that you've got wrong with you but they don't like when the mirror is shown to them they're not as forthcoming. I think it's really funny when I watch people project their own insecurities onto other people. I'm very disheartened 
by the fact that they don't understand what they're doing by now. Like, we're in a time of illumination. We're in a time of transformation. Like, we don't, like, simply turning our eyes away from the fact that what we're attracting in some way lies deep within us is, is just, um, to me, it's, it's ignorant. It's us intentionally being ignorant in an area in our lives. It's because... <sighs> See how angry and a blunt and um, harsh a Mars and Aquarius and retrograde and a lunar eclipse in um, Aquarius sounds. Just very bitey, very petty, very passive aggressive, very, it's not me, it's you, you know, type energy. It's very bitter. It's a bitter pill to chew on and I didn't like feeling it. And I'm so happy that we had an emotional, um, experience with our solar eclipse so that we can start to understand what we emotionally need at this time because with our emotions being so far away from our sun and everything what we're what we're digging out of us is so suppressed and raw i felt it, it feels like just raw as if you were pouring salt into a wound a really fresh wound it's like a burning pain it's like I, I'm gonna tell you just a couple things I hope they relate to somebody out there I apologize if I'm talking too much about me but I'll be walking along and I'll be having a marvelous day right just beautiful suns out it's I, you know there's not, everything is going right in my life I could not ask for more and then I'll get this flash from nowhere that comes from some deeply internal place that gives me an image that makes me upset about my past and I'm and I'm angry about it because I feel so aligned with my future and I feel so aligned with the direction I want my life to go and I have let go truly deeply I think on a superficial level on a level that I I am attached to um I've let it all go and I've understood it for the life lesson it was, but the emotional damage that was caused from those struggles way back when, I feel like is the part that my brain just can't, can't let go of for whatever reason. It's, it's, I'm not done with that shadow work and, um, the emotional realms is, is the tricky part for this. Uh, eclipse because an Aquarian energy really does like sorry I had to move something the Aquarian energy really does like to detach itself from the emotional experience because when you are forward energy when you are shaping your future when you're developing something from a concept um, people can get really caught up and very passionate about um, making life stay the same but if you're this like forward energy this creative soul this this entity that believes that um, change is good it's challenging others sorry about that it's challenging others it's challenging what where their comfort zones are and you're coming up against them I feel like for the people that are really aligned with um, earth energy, I feel like there is a great deal of resistance. Um, people are critical, deeply critical of those that are pointed north. And they, I feel like they're trying to, because they're really caught up in the material realm, like the physical realm, they don't really understand where there's a lot of people right now that are so illuminated. They're working in a different realm. They're working in uh, the spiritual realm. They're working where they're connected to their intuition and they're going solely based on their intuition. 
um, when I moved to Seattle, it was all based on my intuition. I j it was like I was in a really, I was in the dark. And my flashlight only illuminated a little bit at a time. And if I had utter faith in my flashlight, right? Because my flashlight was the only thing that, I, I, that's where, wherever my flashlight pointed, that's where I could see into, uh, you know, down the way. But if I turned my head right or left, if I turned around, I couldn't see anything unless my flashlight was pointed in that direction. I feel like that is the energy I'm really tuning into with this lunar eclipse. It's where's your flashlight pointed? If it's, if it's pointed on the material realm, I feel like that is um, the square, you know? Um, because you're going to look backward. And you're going to recall a time in your life when it, there was a more ideal picture than your current situation. And I feel like that's where the darkness starts to set in. Um, is your sun, it's dampering your sun. Your sun doesn't seem to burn so bright there for some reason when I, I see like a shadow go over the sun. And it's kind of like a dimming of a light. And I feel really, that energy I'm not, I'm, so since I'm a Leo based energy, I've got, I, my sun is in Leo, Mercury's in Leo, Mars is in Leo. And actually my sun and um, Mars are completely conjunct. I don't like being told that I can't do something. No, if I'm forward, if I'm directional, and if I hit resistance, I am a forward energy anyway. I'm like a linebacker on, I think it's a linebacker, I'm not a football person, but you know, just running down a field or the person who runs, the quarterback, the quarterback who runs the ball down the field and they've got to plow through all the people. Uh, that's me. That's, that's a Mars and Aquarius conjunct a lunar eclipse for sure. If there's an emotional situation, I feel like you want to plow through it anyway. Um, and I feel like you shouldn't. <laughs> There's res every time I get a lot of resistance in a certain area, I humbly submit now as I'm older. As I'm older and I understood that as I have tried to push through things before, the, before it was time, because my ego wanted it, um, I, I got what I wanted but I didn't feel emotionally satisfied because it was such a fight to get it, right? It was such a fight and it was short-lived. It wasn't a long-term, I, I didn't feel success. So let's, I can put it in a different way too. I feel like for the people that are really caught up in, and I'm not saying you shouldn't be caught up in the tangible realm, um, the physical realm, we have to live on earth, we have to survive. We need resources, we need money, um, we need a job. Like we need to exist in that realm, right? Um, that, that realm allows me to do all of this for free for you. I don't take any money, I don't do personal readings, I don't do anything. This is my heart and I don't think that should come at a cost for you. But I have to work really hard to give this to you. But it's it's my gift to you, but not only is it my gift to you, it's my gift to me because I'm doing something that my heart truly deeply believes in. It's completely on a humanitarian level. It is not something that I want to generate income from personally because I don't I don't think that healing should be something you have to pay for. That's just my personal belief. It doesn't matter that people do it. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying as the, the way that I relate to the material realm is the material realm provides me resources to do what my heart loves, which is heal and be there for people who need me. 
and I worked really hard in both realms to make sure that I live in balance. My heart is never happy without my spiritual fulfillment, without where my, where my fire, where my heart, where my life is centered around. If I can't do this, I'm not mentally a happy person. Um, in the same sense, I'm very happy in the physical realm as well. I have found a way to find happiness by keeping my life very simple in the physical realm. And I had to do that by letting go a lot of things that my ego had wanted prior. And I struggle with that like everybody does right now. We, we are struggling in an area in our lives where our, we had really thought that there was a specific area in our lives that was, we were going to generate happiness. That was, I mean, in the physical realm. And that particular place, um, I think was where the shadow work existed the most, is where we needed to see the darkness. Now here's the tricky part with shadow work. It takes some serious cojones to do shadow work. It is a humiliating, dark place to face. You gotta be really brave to step into the dark realms of your emotional psyche. You know, the place where you suppress things and hide things from yourself. And you've had a lot of mirrors showing you exactly the work you need to do. Now, going into these realms is is hard and i from a girl who's been doing it for about a year now um i mean i did it before but nothing like this after the solar eclipse where i just let my my uh, intuition override where i where i put all of my heart and soul into my intuition and my intuition is directly in line with my destiny and my fate and my my purpose and I didn't question it when it told me to do things that were so hard and so isolating and so dark I faced them all and um, it, shadow work is it's scary it's isolating it's super lonely super lonely um, but it's also the place where you find who you really are it's like there's a person deep inside of you that you don't know it's funny when you grow up and you you know you try to make your parents happy and then you go to school and you try to make all your peers happy at school and then when you go into the world, you try to make everybody happy. Like you try to, maybe you find a significant other. You try to make that person happy. You try to make your family happy. You try to make, um, you know, the peers at your job happy, your boss happy. It's like you forget how to make you happy. That's what the whole solar eclipse was all about. That's what the solar eclipse in, in Cancer was all about. That's what the lunar eclipse in Aquarius is all about. It's about... You know, an Aquarius is a unique energy. It's, it's, it's not understood. It's, it's a place in you where you're going to stand out so entirely different that it may actually put people off. It's, it's not going to be where you're popular. <laughs> It's going to be in an area where there's just something so different about you. 
authentic. Um, where you stand, like, when you're tapping in to this type of energy, okay, for instance, let me, let me give you another one. We all went through the Uranus and Taurus, um, excuse me, the Uranus and Aries time where all of us experienced how we wanted to stand out and be recognized and accepted for our unique qualities. Well, now all of that energy is going into, we want to stand out and be valued, right? We want to be truly valued for the unique human being that we are, for the special gifts that only we have. And we have a dollar amount attached to that mentally I'm, or an emotional dollar amount. You know, like we know our value now. Honest, we know us. We know what we have to give. We know what we want. We are shedding um, stuff that was, uh, that our ego wasn't aligned properly in. And now we're really starting to see our potential, right? We're really starting to see where where our value lies and and how we recognize it it's not by like a popularity contest it's something that we are centered on that's why the sun and the moon are so far apart right now and the earth is in the middle is because we're trying to get the we're trying to get everybody on board with us and the value system in in the physical realm is just annoying, right? What they value is, um, it's fleeting, actually. One minute, it's big lips and big butts, and then the next minute, it's no lip fillers and no big butts. You know, it's, I've got to look like an Instagram model, and then you look, everybody starts looking like an Instagram model, and then all of a sudden, oh, it's the natural look now that's really in. And so now everybody's wanting um, surgeries that make them look natural. It's so exhaustive in the material realm, I'm, I'm in physical realm. I'm so annoyed by it, to be quite honest with you. I'm not aligned at all with any of that. If you're really doing this work, you're simplifying your life so much where you're really taking a look at everything in your life and you're like, I don't need that anymore. I don't need that anymore. I don't want that anymore. Um, you're starting to focus on being secure, stable, balanced, where you're looking at, where you're tuning into all of your senses in your body. And um, what's becoming very important is that everything stays in balance and is grounded. And the things that make you feel emotionally unstable or the most emotion emotionally insecure, those places are places that we're letting go of. People we're letting go of. Things we're letting go of. When I moved out here, I left everything behind. Clothes, all my furniture. I left everything but pictures of, of my kids. That's pretty much all he took and some clothes to get me by. I. I didn't want anything from the past tainting where I'm going because I know I'm going somewhere better than where I was and I'm not going back. I mean, there's nothing tying me back to my past. Absolutely nothing in my heart, my soul, my life is all directional and it's all forward. And that is pissing people off, right? There's a lot of people that don't understand my my channel. There's a lot of people that don't understand my readings. There's a lot of people that don't understand um, my type of astrology. I don't care. Like, then don't watch. <laughs> That's like my little Aquarian spirit. Actually, do you know that I have my 10th uh, house in Aquarius? So, of course, I'm never, ever going to follow along with other people. I'm going to always be leading my life in a direction not where everybody's going you know it's always going to be in the unique direction in the different direction 
And even though, you know, sometimes when I, I listen to other people's astrology, even though it's getting harder and harder for me to do that because I feel like people are, are giving um, the astrology that's like in a book or like the astrology that will get them readings or, but they're not like really digging into what astrology is on a spiritual level. And that's just my own like critical opinion, my Venus and Virgo and a square. I have Venus and Virgo, so it's definitely in a scribe. I do get frustrated with that, and I do get very critical of... So I actually can't usually watch people anymore um, unless they're incredibly unique. If, if, I, if I find somebody who's unique, then I lock on to them, and I will listen to them continually because their vision for the future is something I can identify with. If it's just the same old, same old... Um, I got nothing like they don't they don't attract me whatsoever because I'm just very aligned with that 10th house work and that's only because I've had eclipses unfortunately in a in my 10th house and in my um you know my It's been, this is just, when you're feeling this energy, I want you to try to do something for me. I want you to not get lost in the shadow, in the darkness, in the pool that is inside between your sun, your soul, and your emotional. Like if you're, if you're having a very difficult time right now because there's a division inside of you and you're being torn in two separate directions, okay, give yourself some time and don't force anything and don't resist it and don't try to push it in a certain area. Don't do that. Just give yourself a break, take it slow, and just give yourself a little bit of a release of expectation and just go with it for a while. And let's see where this takes us for the next six months, okay? I hope you guys have a wonderful lunar experience and I'll talk to you real soon.